Hi everyone, it's Joanne here from Apple Tree Studio. And if you're here to paint lovely loose daffodils, then I think you're in the right place because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So before I start that, this tutorial here is the one I've just finished with my patrons. And as you can see, it's lovely wet into wet uh, yellow daffodils in a vase with the stems going into the water and that's quite an advanced uh, tutorial because I take my patrons through from the initial stages right through to the finished painting and that is just so much fun. So what I thought was I'll produce a little warm-up which is what we're going to do today and I must confess that <laughs> I only meant to paint one daffodil and I got so carried away there's no three. So you can paint one, two, three or a whole field full of daffodils. It's completely up to you. So let me just start by saying as well that I don't post here every week like some tutors do uh, because I just don't have the time. I put all my energy into my Patreon channel which I absolutely love. I mean I can't believe that I started it in lockdown and it's gone from strength to strength with some fantastic members producing some amazing art. And there are over 70 tutorials on there now, all watercolor and you're spoiled for choice. So yeah, so I don't get a chance to kind of post here as much as I'd like. So if you don't want to miss any content that I post, then please do subscribe. Do it now, subscribe. <laughs> that would be doing me a huge favor as well. So I really thank you in advance for doing that. Uh, you can find all the information for my Patreon channel uh, and lots, lots more on my website, which is artbyboon.co.uk. So, are you ready to paint some delightful daffodils together? Then go grab your brushes and let's get going. So as usual, let me go through the materials I'm going to be using today. I've got a piece of Saunders Waterford and I've got my drawing down on there as well. And you can see I'm just going for three very simple daffodil shapes and not too much detail though with the drawing because I want us to be nice and loose with this. I cut it to size as well. I don't take my paper down. I may want to move it around. I've got a big jug of clean water. Just off camera here, I've got my kitchen roll, always handy. Another thing that I would not be without is my spray bottle. I may use it, I may not, but I just like it being there, like a little comfort blanket. Uh, two brushes, I've got a size uh, eight round brush and a size two mop brush. I've also got a piece of candle wax, or well, a wax crayon, but you can use candle wax. Uh, I've sharpened this with a little knife and you can buy these from the craft store or you can just break up an old candle. Uh, I've got a bucket full of wax that I just love to use different types of wax. Uh, the church candles, if you're gonna use a wax uh, candle is probably the best uh, but these these little ones are just great or you could use a wax crayon in a children's set any wax resist will do uh, color wise I'm going for three primaries as usual my patrons will tell you I'm massive on three primaries there's the rose matter deep there's the ultramarine blue and there's the cadmium yellow and I'm just going to move those to one side for now and I'm going to start to put in a bit of wax resist and I like to put it where I want the highlights and it's a tricky one because if you've not used it before you have to be very sparing with it you don't want to overdo it it's like anything else you don't want it to kind of overpower the whole picture so I just like to just use it on its sharp edge and just give some lovely little curly marks here around the trumpet shape here maybe across that shape as well because I want the light to come from the top so I'm going to pop in a bit more candle wax here around the trumpet maybe along those lovely petal shapes oh what about the little stamens inside I can pop a little bit in there as well maybe just a little bit down the edges of those stalks or stems and you know what I think that's enough we don't want to overdo it so I'm going to take my large brush to start with and I'm going to start to put in some shadow colour just using that ultramarine blue just on its own you don't want it too dark, but you don't want it too weak. So I'm working wet onto dry paper and I know that it's going to dry slightly lighter once it's dry. So I'm going to put it around that shape will be quite nice. 
maybe a little bit into that trumpet shape as well, just to give me that highlight. Maybe a bit here. I'm just pulling that shadow colour out, wetting my brush and just allowing that to flow. Lots of water. I'm not keeping within the lines. It doesn't matter if I go out of the lines. Let's do the same here. Let's put that as a dark shape in here. And I want the trumpet shape to stand out. So I'm going to put that blue against that shape. Always exploit exploiting a dark or a light, should I say, if I can. What I mean by that is I'll always put a dark next to a light just to show it off. Even in real life, if it's not even there, I'll still do it. OK, let's put some dark shadow in here. Let's put some shadows around that shape. And it's as simple as that, really. So I'm just keeping those lights if I can. Now, I'm going to make the darker trumpet shape uh, much darker than that, but I can still go in and just put a little bit of value in there just to show it off. But I'm going to come in much darker later on. And we'll pop a little bit in there as well, look. Now, it's nice and wet and I want you to be brave now because I'm going to do a little bit of splattering. So I'm going to take my yellow, roll my brush around in there. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just going to tap into that. And if it happens to go into the whites of the flowers, that's all good. It doesn't matter. There we go. I often say that painters should be fun, and <laughs> that is fun, isn't it? Let's take some of the red, and let's do the same. Let's just tap that in. I'll try and avoid the flowers a little bit if I can, but when you're working like this, unless I mask that off, there are always going to be casualties. I'm never going to get it exactly, exactly right, and so I'm always going to get little blobs in places that I don't want. But there we go, that's nice and fine. And at this point, I have to let this completely dry uh, because we're going to rein it in now with some stronger values. And what we really want to do is to make those daffodils pop out from a dark background. And this looks rather messy, I know, but it'll come into play towards the end of the picture and it'll give it a unity as well because they're the three colours we're going to use and there are the three colours on the paper. In fact, while it's still wet, let's just... Pop a bit of blue in as well. Go on then. <laughs> Why not? Okay, I'm going to let this completely dry. So this one is nice and dry now. And you can see uh, we've just got very, very random splatters going through that picture. And that's exactly what you want. Let's pop a bit of colour into the centre of those flowers now. So... Let's go for some lovely yellows and reds. So let's put a bit of yellow into the centre of each flower. So a little bit of yellow going into that one. I'm trying to go around that little stamen if I can, but if I lose it, it's fine. Let's take some of that red and let's pop that in as well. I can just soften that down with my brush. In fact, I might put a little bit more into that just to show off, there we go, to show off that lovely centre. A bit more yellow perhaps, just pull that out. There we go. And we'll do all three, so we'll put this one in now. I'll try and paint around that little stamen. Again, if I lose it, it doesn't matter. There's the yellow. We'll pop a bit of that red in there as well. clean my brush I'm just soften that down in fact I think I could go a little bit darker just pushing that colour into that shape I'm just gonna lift that a little bit away there look and you can see it's broken the edge there that's that's fine it, it you know it doesn't have to be perfect let's take this one now I'll try and paint around the stamen Let's take the red and pop that into that centre as well. Just cleaning my brush and just softening that down. There we go. Now, that doesn't look much at the moment, but it really will 
pop later on because we're going to add a few more darks as well. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, let's come in and suggest some stems. So let's just take the yellow for now. And there's a nice stem, look, we might see a bit of it there. But now we see it. No, we don't. Ooh, now we see it. No, we don't. Now we probably see it. Here's one here, look, coming out here. So we can, now we see it. No, we don't. Oh, maybe now we see it. And just one here. It's quite nice. I may make them green, but I kind of like them uh, yellow. So I might leave them like that. But I think the next stage is where I want you to be really brave because we're going to come in and start to add some really strong details. And we're not going to put them in the flower shapes. We're going to work on the background. And I get asked this so many times. How do I paint backgrounds around a flower? And this is a lovely way to do it. I mean, there's so many different ways, of course, but this is my favourite way to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do that as soon as this is completely dry. So once we're nice and dry, we can start to put some juicy colours into the background. And I'll say, uh, I'll kind of reinforce what I said before about I don't take my paper down because I do like to move it around. And we want to produce washes that are coming out from those floral shapes. And I don't want my arm to be in the picture and it's very difficult to paint into this section with my hand like that. So why not just tip it that way? Why not? <laughs> it's as simple as that really. So let's go for some really bold colour now. Let's put a bit of blue into that red and produce oh, a lovely purple colour. So I'll just get my bearings here. So yeah, let's put it right against that light shape. Let's have it, oh, coming out, something like that. Maybe a little bit around that shape. So you can see how dark that is, can't you? And that's going to make those lights really sing. I'm going to put a bit of blue into that. Now, you could put yellow in there. Any colour you like, really. As long as it's a dark value, it doesn't matter. There we go. And that is going to make that just sing with lights. And really, there's not a lot to do on the flower shape itself. You don't have to put too much detail in there because that's telling the story for us, isn't it? It's giving us an idea of the shape of the flower and that's exactly what we want. Just going to soften this hard edge here. So I want to come back to this section, but I'll just soften it for now because I want to work into this section here at the top. Let's go for a different colour. Let's just to show you that you can use any colour. So I'll put some yellows into that. Look, why not? And, and we're working on a variegated wash here, aren't we? Because the colours that we're putting down are just blending beautifully together on the paper. So now I'm getting oranges, I'm getting greens. I've got to keep my water nice and clean for that to happen. And there we go, just bringing that shape to a conclusion. Let's come in with some more blue. So here we might have, say, a little stem shape. There's the leaf shape again. There's another petal. We'll go right over that stem shape. You have to keep cleaning your brush if you want to paint like this, because obviously you want those washes to be nice and clean. Lovely. I'm going to give mine a little spritz here. And again, there's no rhyme or reason to that. I just love doing it. Just love just to spritz into the wash. And what happens is the washes tend to soften down a little bit as well then. And it helps them to blend a little more as well. I'm going to give mine a shake because there's quite a lot of water on there. I don't want it to run back into my flower shape. So giving it a bit of a shake. And there we go. And I can work down the picture now. I can carry on with this technique. And let's go back to what I said before. I always put a dark against the light. So let's make sure that we do that. So let's take that purple again here. I like that petal to really stand out. So I'm going to put some purple in there. Maybe a bit of the blue. Oh, lovely jubbly. Bringing it out. 
Oh, then it meets another petal shape here. We can come underneath there, look like that. I can add some reds. I can tip my paper any way I like and allow those washes to run in any direction that I want them to. There we go. And you can see now everything's starting to make a little bit more sense, isn't it? And there are always going to be casualties when you work like this. You know, you might lose a petal. <laughs> you might lose a stem, but hey-ho, it doesn't matter. Let's not be too precious about things. Let's come in with some lovely juicy reds on this side. Why? Because I want to. <laughs> and you can see now as well that the wax starts to come into play a little bit here. I can just see those lovely little waxy marks that I put in earlier. Soften away lots of water, just bringing those washes out. Maybe a bit of yellow over there would be quite nice. And all the little speckles that we put in before are really starting to show now. Okay, let's come on to here. There's the frilly bit. There's a petal from the other flower. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. And you've got to have or be prepared, really, and have lots of wash available. I'm just going to knock that back because I want that flower to sit on top of that one. So I'm going to lose that petal shape for now. I can come across those lovely stems. Bring that wash down. There we go. I'm constantly just working my way down the picture. I can see little areas that just might benefit from a little, a little spritz. I've washed there. All the way down. Oh, some more blue, I think. There's the petal shape. I'm going over the top of the stems, but I can find them again here, look. Come underneath here. I'm not going to make it as strong down this half because I want it to be stronger than mid and then maybe get a bit lighter as it comes down. Let's pop some yellow in that as well. A few splatters would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Oh, there we go. Now there comes a time, obviously, when I have to stop because I can't go back into these washes now, uh, so I have to let them completely dry. And, you know, your washes are going to be completely different to mine. Don't worry about that. As long as you are just painting around these shapes and keeping it nice and loose, keeping your washes clean, you can see my water's getting a bit dirty now, so I'm going to turn my camera off, I'm going to change my water, I'm going to patiently let this one dry, and then just look for the juicy little details that I want to put in it. Maybe I could just add just a touch of value here. I seem to have lost that shape a little bit, so I'll come in with a bit of purple and just find that shape again. There we go. And I'm going to put my brush down. Okay, little spritz. And I'm going to be very patient and let this one completely dry. So it's nice and dry. I'm going to pop in some darker colour into those centres with a bit of that red and yellow. Just a few little touches of dark there. Just around that stamen shape and out from the centre. Pull that out a little bit. And really, there's not too much more we need to do because they're looking lovely and fresh. And this is the danger time, isn't it? When you think, oh, when do I know when to stop? And it's when you start looking for details, that's when you need to stop. But we do need to add a few more details. I'd like to add some more shadow colour with a little touch of the red and the blue. And just maybe come underneath maybe that frill look there, look, just to show that off. There we go. Maybe a little bit more here. There we go. Not too much because I want to keep that nice and light. 
let's come across here and let's put some more shadow to that section. There we go. So we're just keeping that top half nice and light. And we'll put some more shadow around this frill. Oops, a bit dark. They're just little tiny touches, but they, they will make all the difference. Let's take that blue shadow colour again. A little bit of the red going in there as well. And, oh, okay, let's find some more details. So I'd like to show off this shape here a little bit more. So I'm going to come in with a dark. And just pull that dark out. Something like that. And again, I lost a, I lost a, a petal shape here, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Let's have a little bit of a shadow to that one. Because I want white petals, but I don't want them to be totally white. I want them to have a bit of life. There we go. What about if a petal overlaps another one? So let's let's come in here and let's put a darker value. Here. What about some linear marks as well that suggest the shape of those petals? There we go, we have another one there, look. And I'm going to make it that little bit darker here. Why? Because I want to show off that top edge, that lovely frill. Cleaning my brush, just pulling, softening away. a little bit onto this one as well so I've kept that as a nice light so I can come in with some darks I can come in with a little bit of dark here as well look under the frill here maybe some nice linear marks coming out like so cleaning my brush just pushing the base I'm using this part of my brush really the base of the brush just to push in that value and now I want to just add some tiny darks around the shapes just to show off some of the shapes a little more. So, for instance, here, I've got a bit of a raggedy edge here. So I'm going to come in with my blue and my red. And I'm just going to give that a little bit more shape. Maybe find that stem again there, look. And again, all your pictures are going to be different. So you can have your darks wherever you want them. It doesn't matter. Put them where you think you need them. I needed mine there, look, so that's where I'm going to put mine. Plenty of water, just softening that down. I don't want to cover that initial wash too much because it looks rather beautiful. So the thing is, you don't want to lose that, do you? OK, let's find another shape. Oh, OK, Let, let's come in here and let's do a bit of tidying up here. So I'll go around the frill. Oh, then I find another petal shape just using that blue cleaning my brush heel of the brush just pushing that out there we go and what about underneath here so so i've got a petal shape here oh and then i've got a stem and then i've got the shape of the flower so it's just that little section I'm concentrating on and into that as well. Just a touch into this one. We'll find those stems again. Just little pockets of dark. This is where you don't want to overdo it. <laughs> and I'm very aware that I am looking for things to do. And that is always a danger. I'm going to come in here. Have a bit more dark and I think I should follow my own rules <laughs> and put my brush down but the thing is it's so much fun isn't it painting loosely uh, that you never want to stop <laughs> but I think I should I'm going to put my brush down I'm going to give mine a little spritz I can just see I've got a very dark edge there I just want to lose that I don't want it to be so dark I'll just spread the love Spread the wash love out a little bit more. 
There we go. Clean water. Let's give it a little spritz. Perfect. And there we go. Some Juicy Lucy loose daffodils. Of course, they could be yellow daffodils as well. I've just kept mine white, but you could give them a yellow wash to start with, couldn't you? It is fun, isn't it? I hope you enjoy having a go at that. If you're finding that a bit daunting, by the way, just, just do one. Just try one and then move on to two and then move on to three. It's so much fun. And that's what watercolour should always be about, is just enjoying that process and having fun and not putting too much pressure on yourself. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Take care.